what is the meaning of life? That is, why are we alive? And how were we meant to live? How was our behavior meant to operate in our personal and our business and our educational lives? Those are some of the questions we're trying to answer on this program through our discussions together. And what we have concluded so far over these past six months is that we were made by an intelligent mind. That's obvious because of the design and order that we, along with Einstein, perceive in our natural world, in our human world, in our mental, emotional world. We can see in the chart of the elements the order that is built into the physical world itself. We can see in the structure of the DNA molecule that the whole natural universe did not come about by time plus chance, but through deliberate, intelligent planning and design, simply because of the fact that we do not find order and design in our world unless we can trace it back to the activity of an intelligent mind. So it is obvious to us, as we have been discussing during these six months, that we were created by an intelligent person, at least as personable as we are, otherwise he couldn't have created persons like us. And of course we've been discussing together how his son in the first century of our era, and we examined his life to see if it was historical and if he was a historical person, and we've examined his life also to make sure that he was not some kind of crazy lunatic. But this man, Jesus, has explained that his father put you here on earth and made you like him eh, with the same capacities as he has so that you during this life of 70 or 80 years here would become utterly like him inside in your own character by your own choice so that you could begin to take part with him in an infinite development of the universe after this life is over. And, of course, for that reason, he has made you unique. There's nobody else like you in the whole universe. There never will be. There never has been. And it is your responsibility in this life to fulfill the plan that he has in putting you here. That's why you are not just any telephonist, you're not just any telephone operator. You're not just any president of a company. You're not just any secretary or any electrician. You are a unique electrician. You're a unique joiner or carpenter. You're a unique uh, charwoman. You're a unique maid. You're a unique master. You're a, a, a unique lord of the manor. You're a unique king or a unique prince. There's nobody like you. The Creator made you absolutely unique. You're different from everybody else. You can know him in a way that nobody else can know him. And actually, he can have a relationship with you that he can have with nobody else in the whole universe. So it is a remarkable situation that we face. But in the light of that, how are we meant to operate in this present life? That's a question that many of us face day after day. We read all kinds of psychology books and all kinds of articles on temperament, but we're still left with the question, yes, but how is my mind and my will and my emotions really meant to work? How are they meant to work together? And how am I meant to use the abilities of my personality? Well, the Creator was good because he did give us his own plan for our personalities. And in that plan, you may remember, he explained in various places in the Bible, and if you want to look those up, you can write to me, please, and I'll give you the references, but so that I don't uh, seem like some mad uh, evangelical type here, uh, I won't quote a lot of Bible verses and throw them at you. I'll just say to you that in various places in the Bible, the creator of the universe indicates that we have been given three different levels of life. We have a physical level, which is obvious, our body and its five senses, through which we perceive the outside world and through which we experience other people and other things and other circumstances and events. 
Then inside that, as if that is an overcoat, inside our overcoat is a suit, uh, that is our soul, the psychological part of us. It's Greek, uh, in Greek it's suke, it becomes psyche through Anglo-Saxon sound changes and becomes uh, what we know as psychology and psychiatric, all those terms. The soul is the mind and the emotions and the will. And then inside that, uh, like a shirt inside a suit, is our spirit. And our spirit is the part of us that is related to God. Our soul is the part of us that is related to ourselves. It's the self-conscious part of us. It's the part that that uh, uh, person referred to when they said that uh, our brain cells are the only ones who can think about themselves. Our soul is able to think about itself. We're able to examine our thoughts. What are you thinking? You can, you can tell me what you're thinking because you can look in and see what you're thinking. Uh, what are you feeling? You can tell me what you're feeling at this moment, whether you're feeling sad or happy, uh, upbeat or downbeat, because you can look down, uh, look inside in your emotions. Uh, similarly with your will. If I ask you what do you want to do, you can examine your will and see what you want to do. But when it gets to the spirit, that is the inside part of you, that part of you has to be practiced and exercised by faith because it is the deepest part of you and yet it's a part that you are not immediately aware of and conscious of. So your spirit is the part of you that relates to God. And we are meant to operate in a certain way with that spirit and soul and body. What we did uh, a few days ago was examine the makeup of the spirit. And we saw that our spirit is the real you. It's you as you really are. It's you when you're alone. It's you when you are not compelled or constrained by any external uh, pressures of responsibility, obligation, duty, desire to please somebody else. It's you yourself. What you are when you're alone, that, as one of the old classical authors said, that you are and nothing more. So your spirit is the real you. It's you as you really are. And the creator of the universe made you with a spirit because he made you unique. And your spirit is the root of your uniqueness. It's the real you. When we talk about Churchill's spirit, we mean the whole attitude of the man, the, the thing that made Churchill Churchill. Now, that's what your spirit is. It's, the, it's what makes you you. It's you yourself, deep down, the real you. And, of course, we were meant to live with that spirit of ours in relationship to God, in a relationship with the creator of the universe. And if we had that relationship, your spirit would be alive and you yourself would be alive. Most of us, of course, have spirits that are miserably dead. Long ago, we cease to remember who we were. That's why it's still popular to ask that seemingly, it seems a dumb question, uh, who am I? Oh, I don't know who I am. I have trouble with my identity. Uh, in the old Second World War days, we would have said, just look up your identity disc and you'll see who you are. But still, that question is asked today, and increasingly it's necessary to ask it because we have almost lost ourselves, most of us. Oh, most of us can't really tell who we are. We've become such chameleons. The chameleon, you remember, is the little animal that turns the color of its environment. Uh, whatever it's surrounded by, that it becomes. So many of us are chameleons. We become what we're expected to be. We become the kind of people that please our teachers because that gets us points, because that'll get us on in our career. We become the kind of people that please our boss because that'll get us promotion. We become the kind of people that please the other person standing uh, opposite to us in the tube because that will keep us out of trouble. So we become little smiling uh, cookie monsters who will do anything to get a cookie. And we become little people who like to be petted and patted and stroked and praised. And so we do whatever is necessary to get that kind of response from others. So we've long ago lost any sense of what we are. 
And of course, many of us, when we try to become what we are, we become monsters, because in fact, that's what we human beings have become through wanting our own way and through ignoring the Creator. So our spirit is the very heart of us. It's the very root of us. Now, how were we meant to operate in regard to our spirit? How was our personality meant to operate in relationship to our spirits? Well, let's talk a little about that tomorrow.